Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel and thank you very much for joining me for today's video which is all about knitwear. Why am I doing a video about knitwear? Because it's my favourite thing to get chatty about and it's definitely my favourite thing to wear. So what I'm going to go through in today's video is a few of my favourite brands and current favourite pieces of knitwear and I'm also going to touch on a few different points about different fibres slash fabrics that are used in knitwear as well. So I'm going to start off with my first brand which is Arquette. You guys hear me talk about Arquette so much. I would say it is my go-to brand on the high street when it comes to buying most things, to be honest with you. It's just one of those brands which I am very aesthetically drawn to. I like the quality, I'm happy to pay their prices. I just love them. And for knitwear, I just find that year after year, they just excel themselves. And there's a few points which I've started to notice which are creeping into their knitwear designs this season, which I am very much game for. And what I love about Arquette is that they bring out really minimal classic styles. They're very wearable. They do sometimes kind of trickle into trends, but I find that the trends that Arquette tend to roll with are also really classic and they're items which you can just wear and wear and wear season after season, which for me is definitely something that I look for now when I'm purchasing something new. Now, as I just mentioned, there's a few things which I've noticed which are kind of coming into Arquette this season. So the first kind of fibre, if you will, that I've noticed is recycled cashmere. And I actually say this season, but I think they started doing this last autumn winter. So this is one of the new recycled cashmere items. Granted, and I've got obviously quite a bit of knitwear here on the rail and there are going to be quite a few cashmere things which I'm going to be talking about. But granted it is not as soft as some of the other cashmere that I have here on the rail, but with it being recycled I feel like that's essentially a bit of a given because of course this is going to have to be treated in order for them to spin it into new yarn and to create something new. But recycled fibres, recycled materials are still also something which gets a thumbs up from me. Now, one of the other things that I'm noticing more of in our care, especially this season, is the mention of the Responsible Wool Standard, or RWS, as you might see it on some websites. This is something which I only started to research recently, and that's just because I started seeing it crop up more and more. So they use wool from non-mules sheep. If you don't know what mulesing is or what a non-mules sheep is, Google it. Um, I'll warn you that some images could be quite graphic because it isn't particularly a pleasant thing to Google, but it's a good term to familiarise yourself with, especially when you're shopping for knitwear. So the Responsible Wool Standard is essentially a union that is looking after the sheep from which all of this wool is supplied or comes from, and also the land from which they graze on. So if you're looking for knitwear, as I just said, check out and always have a look in the description, see if you can kind of research Research a company and if they use non-mulesed sheep and if they have that RWS certification. Now with Arquette, one of the things I love is that I personally find them quite affordable, especially for a lot of the natural fibres that they're using. And as I just mentioned, now that they're using certifications like the RWS. I know the term affordable is going to mean different things for different people, but for me, this is very much a price point which I'm quite drawn to. There is definitely a range of prices from, you know, the recycled cashmere, which definitely tends to be at the higher end of the price scale. But then there are some items which come in around about the 70 to 80 pounds mark as well. But just from experience, I can say that I just find that Arquette knitwear lasts so long. It's really easy to take care of in terms of knitwear maintenance. And I personally think that it's really good value for money in terms of the quality. Right, moving on to my second brand. And this is one that I actually only recently, in the last couple of months or so, made my first purchase from. And that is Philippa K. Now, this is a brand which I have been meaning to try for at least 
least the last couple of years. It's definitely been high up there on my radar. And similarly to Arquette, it does have that very kind of minimal, neutral, very sort of modern woman kind of aesthetic to it, which is essentially why I'm very much drawn to it. And so over the last couple of months, I finally made myself a couple of orders. So I wanted to try out some of their tailored trousers, which I'm actually wearing, but you guys can't see because you can only see my top half. And I have some of the knitwear. So I have one of their knits on now. This is the Mika Funnel Neck. It is a wool and yak blend. And again, like Arquette, they're using non-mulesed wool and they also have that responsible wool standard certification as well. The quality is absolutely beautiful. I have two of their knits. As I just mentioned, I have the Mika and I also have a navy Molly roll neck and they are absolutely gorgeous. I cannot fault the quality at all. They're just those kind of pieces which are essentially, in terms of style, they're quite basic, but that makes them really versatile and really wearable. And so with those kind of things, especially when they're not trend-led items, I just feel like that's where the quality needs to be at its absolute best. And that is definitely the items which I'm willing to spend a little bit more on. So in terms of the fabrics that Philippa K are using for their knitwear selection, you can find the likes of cashmere, wool, yak. I think they might have some alpaca in there. I'm actually gonna to touch on alpaca shortly in a little bit when I feature something on here. I'm pretty sure that was made of alpaca. I'm gonna to touch on that, especially when it comes to allergy sufferers. So keep watching. Um, but they essentially just have the usual kind of suspects in terms of those natural fibers. And there is not a great deal of use of any of the polyamides, polyesters, or that kind of jazz either, which again, I think is one of those reasons which I am drawn to Philippa K. So if you haven't already checked them out, I would definitely recommend having a little look-see. Right, brand number three is Marks and Spencer, which of course is a part of British heritage. It's probably not part of British heritage, is it? But it is very much a British brand, which has been on our high streets for years. I couldn't tell you how many years, but I know it's been on there for years. And for those of you who have been subscribers or watchers of any of my kind of content for some period of time, you'll know that I love M&S cashmere. It is always one of those things which I harp on about. I think I first mentioned them a few years ago in one of my videos. I have had, I haven't got it here, but essentially this is the piece that I bang on about time and time, year after year, autumn, winter season after autumn, winter season. And it is their basic cashmere jumper. Their cashmere, I just find, for High Street and for the price, which I believe it's currently £79, it's incredible value for money. And not only is it really good value for money, but Marks and Spencer actually score as good, which <laughs> is kind of like an Ofsted inspection. Good is actually a really good score to get on the Good For You app. If you haven't got that app, I would definitely recommend downloading it because it's a really good app to use when you're looking at buying from different brands, especially if sustainability and ethics is kind of making their way into your decision-making process now when it comes to buying new fashion. Now, not only do I have four or five of the basic cashmere crewnecks, I also have some of their loungewear, which if you've just seen my What I Wore in a Week video, you'll have seen that I was actually wearing this set on Sunday, maybe it was. They are, again, really, really good quality, just like the cashmere crewnecks. And what I love most about them is that they're super easy to take care of at home. A lot of people will hear the word cashmere and you'll instantly assume that you have to take it to the dry cleaners. Not with this. I wash this all at home for anyone that's interested. I do have an entire video on how to care for your cashmere, or it's how to care for your clothes in general, but there's a big section in there about how I care, wash for, and maintain my cashmere. So that's worth having a watch, especially if you have any cashmere like this. Okay, now moving on to brand number four, and this is actually quite a specific selection or collection within a brand, and it is H&M Premium. 
So H&M, it's worth mentioning, isn't the most ethical or sustainable brand in the world, definitely not. However, when it comes to quality and longevity, which as I've already mentioned, is definitely something that I look for when I'm buying new items. I want them to be things that I'm gonna wear for years and years and years and things which really hold up over time. The premium collection is definitely one of those collections which I've for one tried and tested over the last few years. In fact, I have a navy jumper from the H&M Premium Collection, which I would say, if it hasn't already reached four years old, it's coming up to four years old. It's one of my favorite jumpers and it's really held up over time. It's a mohair jumper, which I know mohair isn't everyone's cup of tea, but that's one thing about the H&M Premium Collection is that they use a really good selection of natural fibers. And I know that this isn't exactly ideal if you are an allergy sufferer. And this is something I just wanted to slightly touch on here. Allergies, when it comes to wool and cashmere and knitwear and that kind of thing, like natural fibers within knitwear, unfortunately is not something I have a great deal of experience in, as you can tell from my rail, which is essentially all wool, cashmere, alpaca and yak. I look for the natural fibers. That is my personal preference. However, I know that that is gonna be problematic if you do have an allergy. So this jumper here is 40% alpaca and 60% wool. It's the wool content in this jumper that's gonna cause an issue for anyone that has an allergy. Wool contains something called wool fat, which is also known as lanolin, and it's this which causes that allergy. So a fiber that I would advise maybe trying if you haven't already is alpaca. So so alpaca contains barely any wool fat, which is why it is ideal for allergy sufferers. Now, if anyone does have any allergy recommendations or any brands that you found which are really good, which are anti-allergen, do leave them down in the comments below. Same goes for if you've tried alpaca and you find that that is much better for your allergies. Now there's also another bonus of alpaca and that is that it's actually one of the most sustainable natural fibers when it comes to, you know, woolly kind of knitwear fibers to get because alpacas graze in very remote areas. Now it's worth me mentioning that of course you're gonna get two different types of alpaca in terms of where this alpaca comes from. So you're gonna get alpaca farms, which are not really the types that you wanna go for, or you're gonna get herders. So if you're looking, I know that Philippa K mentions this on their website, as do Johnston's of Elgin, which is also something that I'm gonna to get to, a brand that I'm gonna move on to. But looking at brands that source their alpaca from herders, this is definitely the way to go. So as I just mentioned, herded alpacas do graze in more remote areas. They also, when they're nibbling away at their grass, when they're having their lunch, dinner, afternoon tea, brunch, whatever it is, grass all day, every day on the menu, um, they don't pull it out at the root, which leaves behind healthy soil. So they tend to nibble just the top of the grass, unlike sheep and goats, which pull grass out at the root, which does not leave behind healthy soil and does not encourage further grass growth. It's all very scientific, isn't it? Alpaca fibers also require less cleaning than any other wool. And because they come in quite a plethora, I feel like that's my recent word of the month. They come in quite a plethora of natural colors. They require less in the way of a chemical dyeing process. Unless, of course, you want a bright pink alpaca sweater. There are not bright pink alpacas ranging, you know, the hills and mountains. <laughs> that doesn't exist. But if you're looking for greys, neutral colours, blacks, whites, those are the kind of things which require less chemical dyeing. Right, moving on to brand number five. And actually, again, this is a new brand to me in terms of my purchasing habits. It's quite a premium brand. However, I feel that when it comes to knitwear, premium, if you can stretch to that, if your budget permits, it is definitely the way to go because there is a massive, massive difference when you're feeling the quality of knitwear. And this brand is And Daughter. They're a UK-based brand. Every single piece that they make under their label 
comes from the UK. So a lot of things are made up in Scotland and also over in Ireland as well. They are very much a slow fashion based brand with a real ethos around quality and longevity. And they also have a very kind of family run ethic behind the way that they run their business. So there's a real focus on fine craftsmanship. A lot of the finish on their knitwear is done by hand, which is incredible. And this all accounts for why you're paying the price that you would pay for some of their knitwear. Now, I have a look on sites like net a and I'll have a browse in their knitwear sections and there can be a real range of prices. And a lot of the time I do find that the brand name can really amp up that price by a good few hundred pounds. And Daughter for me would definitely be one of those brands which haven't added on a hefty chunk just to make a profit because of their label. So this from me, 110% gets a massive recommendation if you're looking at investing a little bit more into your knitwear. So I did make a purchase of two of their pieces recently. I did order them off net a -Port -A, but on the Andorta website specifically, they do have a lot more styles and options and colorways to choose from. So this one here obviously is beautiful, oversized kind of style. And I think that they have a lot of items that have that more kind of oversized style to them, which naturally I would be very drawn to. Um, but this is a beautiful shade of camel. It's got this gorgeous wide kind of collar as well. So it's great for wearing over a shirt, over a t-shirt, even over another knit which is what I love about knitwear. I love to lay in knitwear, especially as it starts to get super, super cold. And I also bought a sweater vest as well in like a gray color, which again is another really useful item to have for layering. And of course the sweater vest is quite a big prominent trend for this season. Moving on to my sixth brand in terms of favorites, and that is the Curated. Now this, Cashmere selection is actually new for them this season. I say this season, I feel like the curated doesn't really tend to do things seasonally, but it just so happens that for autumn they have started to experiment, if you will, with knitwear and they have brought out a very limited range of styles, but that's something again that I really love about the curated as a brand, which is why I work with them. They're all about building their business slowly and gradually and also about listening to customer needs. So this is their turtleneck, which I have got in two colours. They are really classic wardrobe staples and definitely as dramatic as this sounds, but they are that kind of wardrobe staple that I feel I can't really live without come the autumn winter months. Now these do come with cashmere combs when you order a piece of their cashmere, which I find is really good. That said, the black one I've actually had quite a lot of wear out of and I've barely had any pilling on here whatsoever. Now, pilling, it is a bit of a faff, but I think sometimes it can have a little bit of a negative stigma to it that pilling is really, really bad. Okay, it's annoying because you have to sort it out and you have to either use your debobbler or your cashmere comb. However, cashmere is such a fine fiber that that is just naturally the nature of the fiber with friction, especially in certain areas. So perhaps around the arm kind of area, if you're moving it a lot, you will get pilling on any kind of cashmere. That said, I just find that this is quite a hardy cashmere, still very, very soft but I've worn this quite a lot and I've barely had any pilling, even on the areas where there's been a lot of friction. So if pilling is one of your biggest bugbears, I would definitely check out the curated for their little selection of cashmere. And from what I hear inside info, they do have more cashmere to add, which will be coming soon. And moving on to my final brand, and that is, it's down here on the end, it's Johnston's of Elgin which some of you might remember, we actually went and did the mill tour at Johnston's of Elgin, which is in Elgin in Scotland. Um, that was back in, I think it was either October or maybe November last year. It was one of the best things that I've ever done. And it definitely sparked my interest and a sort of passion in researching a little bit more into knitwear, whether it be the fibers, whether it be sustainability and more ethics behind knitwear production. But I just found it a really valuable learning experience. Now, Johnson's of Elgin, they have two mills. They have one mill in Elgin, which is actually where a lot of their scarves, 
blankets and all that kind of, I think it's called woven goods. It's where all their woven goods are made. And then their knitwear is made in somewhere beginning with H and I can't remember the name of it, but basically they're both up in Scotland. Um, so they very kindly gifted me this was back last year, this beautiful cashmere tracksuit. The quality of their cashmere, and they don't just do cashmere either, they obviously have merino wool, wool, alpaca, but the quality of it is absolutely beautiful. So I would definitely recommend having a look at their website. I have noticed that Johnston's of Elgin have started to creep onto sites like net -a -Porte, Matches even, and actually someone left a comment, I think on Wednesday's video, to say Nordstrom or Nordstrom Rack also have some Johnston's of Elgin so if you're in the US perhaps that could be worth a little look-see as well and along with their outstanding quality they also have a lot of best practices put in place as well when it comes to sustainability and ethical factors. Right that's me done for today waffling on about knitwear. I hope there was potentially some little nuggets of information in there that you maybe took away as a positive um, and also just hope you enjoyed having a look at some of my favorite knits of the moment. So for now, for today, for this week even, that is it from me and I will catch you all next week. Bye.